Here's a video on how to replace a window screen. Very simple job and not many tools required. All you'll need is um, a utility knife so you can cut the spline and cut off um, you know, any of the excess screen. You'll need a spline tool which kind of helps you dig in this spline into the channel around the screen. And then you'll just need some new screen material. Other than that, pretty straightforward job. Any, and let's jump into this. All right, with our screen out, all we need to do here is pull on the spline to take the screen out. And if you can't reach the spline, this little rubber part, you can just kind of pull, try and pull on the screen to sometimes get it out. But if it's frayed as bad as this, you'll just need to try and pry at that spline. And just like that, the old screen's out, and now we can put the new screen in. Okay, easier to work on the ground, so what we'll do is get our new screen material, and there's tons of options out there. Just honestly pick the one that you want best. There's ones with tighter kind of seams. There's ones that are more durable. There's so many different options out there. You just choose the best one that's right for you. I chose one that's extremely durable because I live in a windy area, therefore I don't have to hopefully replace it again. So. Once we do that, pick up the kind we want. We can now just roll out enough material. And don't go don't be afraid to go past the edge of the um, screen the frame of the screen because if you cut it too short then you won't be able to have a nice tight seal around the window. So get a good overlap if you can. Maybe a little bit more. And then just like that. So about there, so maybe about an inch on both sides. So you have a, that's probably almost two inches right there, overhang, and then same on this side, and then on this side there's plenty, and on that side there's plenty. So we'll do that. In fact, let's switch it up and do it this way, so I'm wasting less. There we go. Now I can actually take this in a bit. All right. So you kind of get the deal here. So now what we'll do is just cut this side off so it's easier to kind of work with. All you need is a utility knife, or box cutter, some people call it. And a helpful trick is to put a piece of cardboard or something underneath so you don't dull your blade or cut into the floor you're working on. And it also helps you probably cut better and all the way through the first time. But this doesn't need to be perfectly straight. Just make sure to leave a good inch. All right, get that uh, material out of the way. And now we're on getting. All right. Now, sometimes you can use the old spline. That's what this. It's called that you shove into the grooves around the screen to help that new screen stick in. But over time, this dries out and is less pliable and less flexible. So it's harder to get it to stay in and not kind of pull out. So I like to just use new spline. One thing I would say is there are different thicknesses of spline. So if you have a caliper or micrometer, you can put those around here and measure how thick they, this is. And this one, I believe, is 
uh, 0.125 inches, which is pretty standard, but just know that there's different thicknesses out there. So hopefully that can save you a trip to the store. But anyway, let's see if we can get over there. All right, so now what we want to do is move you over a little bit. Right? Give you maybe a closer image. All right. So, I'm gonna get that old spline out. And now, get the new spline ready to go. Okay, now you can start wherever you like. I don't think there's any kind of secret trick to making this perfect, but just pick a, an, I like to start in a corner. So maybe I'll move this up. That's in frame. So what I'll do is I'll just take my spline material and kind of work it into the groove. So here's what's happening. If we look on the back side of where the screen sits, you can see there's this little channel. You see that? There's this channel that goes all the way around the window. And all we do is we put the screen over, set that in the channel, and then use our spline tool to kind of just roll that in that spline into that channel. So it's pretty easy and these tools are pretty cheap to do this. Easy to work with one hand obviously. And I will say, and I have heard that people have used pizza cutters instead if they can't get a spline tool, but just get one of these. It's super cheap. It's helpful because screens rip all the time. But anyway, let's just kind of dive into this. So yeah, we're just gonna start digging the spline all the way hip, around, and around, and around. And I like to keep it in one piece. I don't think you have to. You could do one piece here, cut it, one piece there, cut it, but why make you know more work of a simple job? And I will say, be very careful when cutting or when digging the spline in that you don't push too hard and actually push onto the screen because you can cut the screen with this tool. Trust me, I've learned from experience. So just start the channel, the spline in the channel, and give it a good push. I like to just go back over it so we keep that spline nice and tight. Should feel nice and flat. All right, once you've gotten two sides in, this is where you can really start to make it tight. And you don't want it too, you don't want the screen pulled so tightly because it'll likely rip again. So it's kind of finding that sweet spot between not being too loose like that, don't want that much, but you also don't want it to be so tight that it easily rips again. So it's just kind of finding a balance. And if you make a mistake, you can easily just pull that spline out and tighten things and work around it. But this has kind of worked for me, where I do two sides and then I get really picky about how tight things are. Okay, and then I like to just go around one more time. Make sure it's all tightly seated in there. Make sure you're not cutting any of the screen. All right, and then once you're kind of satisfied with how tight it is in the middle, again, I like mine a tiny bit kind of on the looser side, just a little bit like that. Now we want to cut off all this excess and first we're going to start with 
cutting the spline. And cut carefully so you don't cut. And then just put the rest of that material. Get you a little bit nicer view. Now all we need to do is cut off this excess screen. And this is an important part to be very careful with because if you cut too, not carefully I guess so to speak, um, you can ruin the ability of the spline to hold in the screen and it can start to loosen and unravel this inside part. So a trick that I've kind of learned is doing it this way. Let's see if I can get you in a good position. Okay, so what I like to do is push, try and have the blade as flush against the screen as you can. Lift up, poke the blade through the other side of the screen, and just keep that blade as flush as possible. And that will cut that nicely. Okay. So I'm just gonna keep doing this. So again, blade flush up against the screen, and just drag it across. And just like that, the screen is done. So just to kind of give you an idea of how this works is, you can see, I didn't cut too nicely there, but that's all the spline is doing. The spline, the spline is literally just pushing down onto the screen and holding it into the channel, and that's how it stays put. If you can see that cutting trick that I showed you, does pretty well in making those Sides, I mean, obviously I need to clean it up a tiny bit, but it does pretty good making it look nice. So maybe I'll, I'll probably just go around one more time with my spline tool just to make sure that this is all the way in. That spline is all the way in, and then we'll be ready to reinsert this into the window sill. Now sometimes this channel can get all bent and screwed up and the spline might fit most of the way, but then let's say maybe it's widened down here, the screen's been bent, Oh, the frame's been bent. What I've sometimes had success with, and if you have a better method, please definitely let me know below, um, is I've, def I've found that using a pair of pliers can sometimes help shrink that channel if it's too big. And all you need to do is put the pliers on the back side of the screen and just gently push so that it collapses that channel just a bit. Sometimes that works, but if you get a little too crazy, sometimes that can squash it. So. Not the best method, but sometimes it can work, especially if that channel is too gaping wide. Um, so if you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comment section below. If you have any tips or tricks, please feel free to share them. This channel is all about helping people, so we'd love to hear things that you've done or successes that you've had in doing this repair yourself. Um, if this video was helpful, please give it a like. And please subscribe and share this video to other people just so we can get this video out there and help other people save money learn some skills and do it themselves. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. All right, so with, you're gonna be pushing these springs. So to get this back screen back in. So I'm gonna put mine on the top side around the window. So we have the top side in. So that all I need to do I have those two in is now push up as hard as I can and then it should go in. Sometimes if you can't get it in all the way you just get a little putty knife to give it a little, have a little bit more leverage but just like that the screen's in. 
So yeah, just use those, those springs will push up and then you can pull the underside in and out if you need to push it in or if you need to get it out.